So now in this video, we're going to make another fading LED on and off. And we've done a couple of videos so far. We're going to come back to the uh, straightforward. The capacitor is charging as the voltage goes up. More current is going through the uh, LED in addition to that. And it's getting brighter. And then when the capacitor starts discharging, we're only going to give it one path where it can discharge through the LED. While it discharges, its voltage is going to drop. And the LED is not going to be as bright. Pretty straightforward. We're going to use the 555 timer to control the charging and con uh, discharging. So we're going to do that wiring it in A stable mode like that. And so we will look at the circuitry. So I'm going to use a 1000 microfarad capacitor. We need a uh, relatively large value and uh, that's uh, about the largest I work with. And uh, I didn't buy any larger ones other than super capacitors. And a 220 ohm resistor to protect the LED. It's uh, more than we need, but we might uh, up the voltage to make the LED brighter. So uh, these resistors should work fine. I think up to 10 volts, so we might go up to that. But in case, when the output is high, that is when the capacitor is charging. So if it gets below one third supply voltage, it starts charging, like it'll do right when we turn it on. And uh, it'll have a little bit more voltage the first time, so it'll be on a little bit more the first flash, but then it should even out after that. But in case it charges through that uh, 150 kilo ohm resistor, that diode, and I'm going to use a 10 microfarad capacitor. So very little current, but it's a low value capacitor. So it's going to charge in uh, somewhere around a second, approximately, somewhere. Now, the uh, capacitor gets to two thirds supply voltage. Pin six will sense that. And uh, so while it's charging, the output is also high. So it doesn't make it to 5 volts, maybe it's 4 volts, I can't remember. But uh, in any case, if we use 5 volts, it's probably going to be about 4. Then, when it gets to 2 thirds supply voltage, pin 7 connects the ground, as does pin 3. So we need this diode, otherwise the capacitor won't just discharge through the LED and protect the resistor. It'll also discharge that way and discharge a whole lot faster. So we have this diode, so no current flows that way well the output is low it only flows that way well the output is high there so that uh, diode is important now so that'll connect to ground which won't do anything in this case so it'll pin seven so it'll be discharging through one resistor just like it charged through one resistor except for the diode we'll throw it off a little bit but in any case it's going to be high and low approximately equal so you can adjust those times uh lower value Capacitor goes faster and uh, lower value resistors go faster. Higher values uh, take longer. And of course, you can balance them out uh, either way. In this case, I have a fairly low value capacitor and fairly high value resistors. But in any case, that's really about it for uh, this circuitry. And we covered it before, just not put together. So let's move along to the breadboard. So now, on the uh, schematic, that's the uh, top pin there, pin 8, we have the positive supply. And uh, pin one, the top pin there, we have the negative supply right there, ground. And uh, so those were drawn out on the schematic, but I didn't talk about them. Pin four is to the positive supply. It's waiting, it's the reset pin, the uh, bottom left pin. It's waiting for a low input, I think below half the supply voltage, but I don't know the exact uh, range. But it's waiting for about uh, zero volts, somewhere around there. If we put it to the positive supply, we're nowhere near zero volts. Makes uh, things pretty easy. So here we got the timing. And uh, when I yank it, you can see the output now is stuck in position, but uh, 150 there, 150 there, and the capacitor. And we have the diode wired so that it's forward biased when the capacitor is charging. Go through that resistor, go through that diode right there. So pin six and pin two are monitoring the voltage. I mentioned that before. And pin seven up there, where the uh, LED, or the uh, diode I mean is, is uh, the discharge pin connects to ground to uh, let the capacitor discharge then at the output we have the diode so again remember we have a diode here because otherwise the capacitor will discharge through the output we don't want that that'll throw things off it also drops about 0.7 volts so we got a little less voltage uh, when it's charging than we would without a diode so that's one thing to uh, remember that I forgot to mention 470 ohm resistor well, the capacitor is charged, you can see that pretty good. And we can go up to 35 volts with this, but uh, you don't have to go up to that. You can stay as low as you want. 
220 ohm to the LED and the long lead, the uh, anode right there at the uh, LED short lead, the cathode to ground and the uh, lamp is up a little bit. So there you can see I like the way the red LED uh, fades. As I said before, I show it on the schematic 5 volts because that's really common. But uh, the way we have this set up, we have enough resistance for the load. We have to go through a 470, which is enough for 9 volts, and then 220, which uh, is a whole lot more resistance, and it divides up among the uh, resistors. And we're nowhere near 20 milliamps of current, so the LED doesn't have too much current. We are plenty safe. But there you can see, that looks pretty good at uh, 10 volts, in my opinion. And... Uh, at 5 volts, not bad, you know, not as nice as 10, I don't think, but uh, not terrible. The green LED is brighter, but I don't like the way that it fades near as much. I would have it uh, get brighter a little bit slower if I uh, finagled with things a bit more. But in uh, any case, I like the way the red one looks, especially at uh, 10 volts. Right there. And now finally to end things, we're going to look at voltage. I try to do that a lot in this uh, series. And uh, we got five squares there because I set the power supply back to five volts. And uh, we'll probably go to six in a little bit. But in uh, any case, we'll look at the voltage across the uh, capacitor, which is also the voltage across the, uh, the load right there because they both go to uh, ground and they both connect up at that point. So you can see the uh, voltage there as the LED changes like that and uh, that's why we could go higher in uh, voltage by quite a bit and we don't have much going across that resistor protecting the LED it's building up at about uh, 1.5 to 2 volts approximately you can see the capacitor can only really discharge to about uh, 1.5 volts another interesting thing we can look at is the diode so I'll put the uh, red jumper to the output we can look at that output voltage too and it's doing a lot better than I thought I thought it was going closer to four it's uh, one two three or about three and a half so no it's not doing better than I thought it's doing uh, about what I thought I thought we were losing at least a volt so that's one thing to uh, keep in mind right there now we'll look at the voltage across the diode right there so well it's forward bias it's dropping about 0.7 volts. You can see that voltage build up there. And uh, so it's going back to zero. It's actually going farther down. So if I press this dial, those arrows pop up. I can turn this faster. And you can see that uh, we got that voltage of the capacitor trying to push in the other direction. So the current's not going through the dial. There's just voltage across it. Uh, there's probably more current going through this meter. But, uh, you know, just a very uh, tiny amount of leakage. But for the most part, that's not what I want to do. For the most part, no currents flowing through the diode when we have that negative voltage. So I think we got uh, zero again right there. And we can uh, look at this capacitor charging and uh, discharging. We've done that before in the A-stable mode. And so it'll be more accurate, easier to read with 6 volts. But that's uh, one-third to two-thirds of the supply voltage. 6 volts makes it easier because then it's going from uh, 4 volts to 2 volts right there and it's not a completely straight line it's a little bit of a curve but it's close to a straight line right there bouncing uh, back and forth about about equal times uh, somewhat close so in any case I'm going to uh, end the video there hope you enjoyed make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting click like subscribe the bell all that donate patreon if you can that helps out the most I have links down in the description uh, check them all out they all help a lot. I'll see you in the next video.